Hello. Today I want to introduce you to a model called Six Category Intervention Analysis by John Heron. It's a fantastic model and uh, I discovered a couple of years ago there's so little information on it on the internet um, but it's a model I've found so helpful in terms of coaching, performance management, building better relationships with, with people in professional situations. And that's where John Heron came up with it. He came up with for, for, for doctors, helping them converse with their patients. And what he worked out were there were six categories of interventions that people could use in terms of developing those relationships. So let's look at it a little bit more. As I say, it's a great coaching, coaching tool. Um, and I've used it uh, in those situations I've already mentioned, coaching, managing staff, and ultimately that then improves their performance and organisation performance, which can only be a good thing all around. Why is it important? It's so helpful. And then you can also use it for things like um, self-assessing your own skills by seeing how many of these in intervention use and on which particular occasions, and that improves your skills, and as I say, building strong relationships and improving performance. So let's look at it. So there are six categories. That's what uh, John Heron was talking about. And he decided that every helpful intervention fitted into one of these six categories. Anything that falls outside of those six categories is degenerate. So it doesn't help either through a person's lack of skill or an intention not to help the relationship. So this model is all about an intention to help. So every time you converse, you use and you choose consciously or unconsciously to use one of these interventions. So those are the six interventions and then the analysis part is that you can use the uh, six interventions to analyze how effective you are in different situations. Do you use more of one intervention than another? Are there any interventions that you particularly rely on? Are there any that you've hardly ever used? So it can help you become more balanced and more effective in terms of what you do. So, there are two groups. There are three authoritative interventions and there are three facilitative interventions. So authoritative, that sort of means telling, imposing your views, raising someone's awareness about something. Whereas facilitative is more about asking, helping the person to come to their own conclusions or reinforcing effective behaviours. And as you'll see, the three authoritative ones are prescriptive, informative and confronting. And the facilitative ones are catalytic, cathartic and supportive. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail now so we can understand them and get some examples. So, prescriptive. This is the first one. So this is all about directing someone's behaviour giving advice or a command or making a suggestion. So something like, you need to speak with Sam before lunch. Send me your action plan by email. So you're telling someone what to do. You're being prescriptive, which is a completely appropriate authoritative intervention. Our second one is informative. So slightly less than prescriptive. It's not telling someone to do something. It's imparting knowledge so that that person can then make their own decision. So, people with colour blindness often struggle to read green lettering. So then the person can decide whether they wish to change the lettering or not. The bus is cheaper than the train. So those are our inf examples of our informative intervention. Confronting. So this is about raising person's awareness about something to do with the behaviour or attitudes that they're not aware of. So I might be debriefing to a trainer during a, a training session when I'm training trainers. And I might say, do you realise that during that session, every question you asked was a closed question? Because I'm wanting them to think about why they did that. And perhaps they might get more out of the session by using open questions. I also might say, on occasions you interrupt and talk over people, which tends to frustrate them. So again, it's enlightening them as to something that I've seen that they, they might not be aware of. They might have a blind spot relating to it. So those are our three authoritative interventions. Prescriptive, informative and confronting. 
So let's move on to the facilitative ones now. So remember in the authoritative we had being prescriptive which was telling somebody, informative which is giving them information and now catalytic is asking them questions so that perhaps they can access that information themselves. Think about a catalytic converter on a car. That changes the toxic gases into less toxic gases. And what you're doing is you're being a catalyst here too. You're helping a person by taking them from confusion, hopefully to a clearer state. So examples, how do you think you could deliver that more effectively next time? What was it that you did that led him to reacting in that way? So these are really great coaching questions, getting the person to think about it themselves so that the learning can be more powerful. So, our next is cathartic, a cathartic intervention. This is, these interventions are really helpful when you're trying to get someone to learn from their feelings or work through their feelings. And um, if you've watched my vlog on the adult learning cycle where someone gets into disorientation, then you'll understand about this and this can be very useful in that situation. And if you haven't watched that or you don't know anything about the adult learning cycle, it's a really helpful model to show what happens for people when they get into um, confusion, disorientation, how you can help them through it. And uh, you'll see the uh, links below on the video now on the slide telling you where you can find out more about that. But cathartic intervention. So you're about enabling or encouraging a person to divulge or discuss their feelings. So examples, how did my comments make you feel? What emotions did the discussion generate for you? So you're asking them to share their emotions, access their emotions and share their emotions. So the sixth and final intervention in John Heron's model is supportive. So we've been confronting about telling people about behavior that might be unhelpful or attitudes that might be um, unhelpful. But we also need to compliment people and tell people when they've done well so that we reinforce good behavior, good activities. You did a really good job there because you, and you give them the evidence. You handle that situation really skillfully by, again, give them the evidence so that you're enhancing that person's self-esteem and hopefully ensuring that they do more of that in the future. So those are our six interventions. That's a quick run through John Heron's model. Now, as I say, you can use this in lots of different ways. Self-assessment, you might even think now, gosh, I use lots of this one or not very many of that one. So how can you actually use more of some of the ones that you don't use? When is the best time for you to use more of those types of interventions? This in turn will improve your skills. It'll build strong relationships and it will improve the performance of your staff, the performance of the person you're coaching, and overall your organisation or their organisation. So that can't be a bad thing. So, thank you very much for watching.